Hello there, welcome to Target Radio Podcasts. Yes, we have a podcast for your ears. Every week here on the show, on our live shows that is, we try and get an interesting uh, person, persons, uh, artists, band members, music, poets, film playwrights. Uh, We even get, uh, well, we try and get everyone. We try and get everyone that's interested in our genre of music that we portray here on Target Radio. So what we do is sit them down, we have a telephone interview, sometimes a live interview and we discuss all things in their profession so stay tuned here this one is an absolute blast you're gonna love this and uh, i'll be back at the end to obviously uh you know tell you what's coming up in the very near future i am the pod father i will now tell you that this is target radio podcast don't forget to check us out on itunes and if you think we deserve it don't forget to leave us a five star rating that would be rather nice thank you very much indeed so over to uh me sit tight and enjoy this is target radio for sunday three sunday night two in the sunday best one sunday go Supposed to blow the bloody doors off. Dear God in heaven, please let this show go okay. With no major boobs or goofs, or is it goofs? Please don't let me dread all over the intros of records. Oh, say a naughty word. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. Hello, 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 welcome to the show. Lock it on to the best station on the net. First we take a groovy record, then we add a super sound DJ. Oh, Sean Kirk. The big DJ, the big DJ. When do I get my badge? I told you they're in the post. So is my car tax. I'm only joking. And a very good evening. Sunday the 23rd of May. Yeah, that's May done. We're into June. That's halfway through 2021. I know what you're saying. Come on, the 21st of June. I'm with you. Anyway, how was your week? Yes, it was a bit wet, wasn't it? It was blooming horrible. Anyway, the saviour for Sunday evenings is here. I'm looking for him myself. Where are you? Oh, 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 oh it's me. The self-proclaimed saviour of Sundays. Well, it's either that or karaoke version of Songs of Praise. Now, who needs that? Okay. Just do a simple hands up. Who watched the Eurovision contest last night? <laughs> hang on, I've got a jingle for that somewhere. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, yes, England. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> oh, what a shame. Anyway... We should have had these guys on instead. I'm not going to ask them a bit later. We're talking about the aim. Yes, we've got the guys on. We're going to be having a, a chin wag about everything musical and probably everything that isn't musical as well. And we're not talking about musicals. We're talking about music and what these boys do. Because I'm really, really looking forward to having a chat with the aim. Finding out how their lockdown has been. Pretty the same as everyone else, really, I suppose. And, um... I just want to say now... Did you know... I'm panning for time here, because I wrote it down here on, um... uh, 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 On the uh, Target Radio. Will you stop sending me messages, please? (laughs) Uh, In 1969, The Who released their album Tommy, a rock opera about a deaf, dumb and blind boy who plays a mean pin 
Ball. Uh, that is today in 1969. And uh, as you know, the show doesn't officially start until <clears throat> we play something from The Who. I bet you can't guess what it's going to be. The aim there. Wasting your time off their album, Days Like This. And I'm sure that's still available. So make some notes, guys, because uh, we need to know if all of these uh, past albums are still available for purchase. Do you know, I'm reading all of these messages and I've uh, got no idea how half of these people are. (laughs) Oh, my goodness me. That was the aim there. And what a way to earn a living. Here's the specials now. For a special couple of guys that are coming on very soon. Just waiting for them all to uh, calm themselves down here on the Facebook Messenger. So uh, no more messaging, uh, please, if you are tuned in to Target Radio with me, Cookie. Uh, no more messaging now because it will go ping, 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 ping. And we won't be able to hear the lads. So while you're getting it all out of your system, I'm going to get my shotgun out. OK, you tuned in to Target Radio and uh, it's about time we've got the guys on from The Aim... For those that regularly tune in, you'll know that this piece of music means that everything could go horribly wrong. (laughs) Okay, here we go then. Right, I'm not sure if uh, Peter's coming on, so I'm just going to tick him. I'm not sure if Sam's coming on. Hopefully we're going to have Grant Judges and Jamie Tung. I think Pete's actually gone down to the uh, to the gym. How dare he? Okay, let's go for it. Right, that sounds good. I like there it is. There he is. Uh, oh, hang on. They're, 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 they're there. They're there. We've got Grant. we got Jamie. And I think we need one of these. That, my friends, is a live audience. <laughs> Do you remember those? Cookie, listen, right. Listen, it ain't my fault. Right. I okay. said to him. Yeah, go on. I said, do we just invite people from the band on it? <clears throat> he went, No. <laughs> I think we just need to invite as many people as possible, everyone we know. Ah, right. I thought we was having a Russell Arty. Uh, No, no, not quite. And uh, yes, I am no... uh, What's that woman's name? Grace Jones. I'm going to get my handbag out in a minute and give you guys a a right good sort of sorting out with a handbag round the head. Anyway... uh, I don't know why I listen to him. (laughs) Oh, my goodness me. Right, we've got Jamie Tung and we've got Grant Judges here from The Aim this evening. How are you two guys? How are you doing? I'm all right. Jamie's come round and he's sitting opposite me, along my big glass table in my dining room. Oh right, okay. Have you got, have you got, the, win- have you got the windows the open? No, windows are closed because it's pouring down with rain. <laughs> That's not generally but, the idea, but uh, <clears throat> just just lie. You've got the windows open, haven't you guys? <clears throat> yeah, I've got oh, the windows yeah, open. Yeah, so yeah, of course yeah, you yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, there the we go. Open. <laughs> For those who know the aim, they know what they're like. Yes, of course they do. Oh, um, I tell you what, it was it was um, manic, wasn't it? For the last half an hour, everyone was messaging, and I thought, do you know something? Everyone's going to go ping, 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 and I thought, no, we can't have that. So I managed oh. to uh, clear it up a little bit and only invited you to. And uh, the lovely Sam as well. Where's Sam at, by the way? Uh, She's doing me a rum. Sam, yeah, Sam's just making her drinks. Oh, that's good. She's, lovely. She, well, yeah, she's making a rum with Cokes. Oh, um, right. You're getting and, in the mood uh, for it, guys. I, I still think it would have been more fun if everyone had answered the phone. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do. I can add people uh, when we come to the uh, nearer to the end. So we'll get, uh, you know, we'll get we'll get the guys on. There, no problems at all. We'll get a few more people in there, and they can all say hello. You know, live on the radio. That's great. Well, so, most of them people we added are what we call the Amyx. <laughs> Amyx. I like so that. Got, yeah, yeah. You got people like Stevie B, uh, Roy Duke, the Silver Sausage. Um, <laughs> Oh, loads of them. Julia, Chrissy Avis. Oh, brilliant. Affectionately known as Chrissy Glitter. 
Chrissy Glitter. Uh, Ian T- yeah, all the Amy acts, all the people that come and watch us when we do gigs. Yeah, yeah. For, th- for those that are not really sure what that word means, gigs, can you sort of enlighten us again, please, guys? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Someone's opening a squeaky door here. Yeah, Say I again. know. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, the word gigs, um, can you just enlighten all of our lovely listeners what gigs actually mean? Because it's been such a long time off and gone. Oh, it has, not it? I mean, our last gig was at the Old Red Arms in Guildford last yeah. August. That's right, yeah. Um, which, funny enough, is going to be our next gig um, this August, on the 19th of August. Wow, is that your first so one back? our next gig. Our, our first gig, yeah, our first gig in a year. Wow. And how are you guys feeling as generally? I mean, obviously, you know, you're all, you're all boots at this. You know, you're very, very, um, you know, uh, professional when you're live up on, on the stage. But surely, you know, because of a year out and everything, um, is there any rust? Is there any nerves? Is there any worries? Uh, there, was, there was plenty of rust no... before the lockdown. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, no, I've got to be honest, I never get nervous. There's no nerves. I, I can't wait. I, I've never suffered with nerves mm. um but i have to be honest we've been doing some we've been doing some like home recording sessions yeah hold on the squeaky door's <laughs> down again that's that's the squeaky door to me tequila bar she's making the drinks opening the door and i i need to put some oil on it I Sean, I've got an important uh, question pick yes. a number between one and five. Oh, here we go uh let's go in the middle number three number three right it's the red leg i'm having then sam it's the big squeaky door. She's squeaky door. So, um, so, but no, I don't. Not nervous. I, I never get nervous. But I'm not going to lie. We've been doing some home recording stuff. Mm, mm. Right. Because obviously studios have been closed. So yes, of course. And um, came to sort of record some vocals, and I, 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 I kind of forgotten how to sing. No, you, that, that's yes. not, the, no, bit, it's that is, all a bit rusty. I'm not going to lie. Yes, of course. So a little bit of a ring rust, as they say in the uh, in, yeah. in in the uh, camp there. But obviously, you know, that's just something. You know, obviously, you've not been doing it uh, for a while. So obviously, you know, is it like a, mum, a memory muscle sort of thing or muscle memory even? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah but yeah, the good thing it. is we've um, discovered auto tune. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I would say I would say Jamie's forgotten how to play guitar, but he can never play it in the first place. <laughs> 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 oh, now, boys and girls, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am speaking with the oh, AIM. <laughs> oh, I think a food fight is about to erupt down the other end of the table. I think so too. Video that and that will go on YouTube later. Okay, for those uh, tuning in for the first time here on Target Radio, I'm going to turn these guys down for a minute. There we are. Okay, they're just having a food fight while we're uh, discussing things. Okay, back to business. Uh, we're speaking to the AIM. Now, if you've never seen these guys play before live, you're in for a really good treat because. Um, not only do they play some really, really good original stuff, they do do some really good covers as well. So, you know, they mix and match it on live on the stage. And there's so many of them. I've lost count now. Uh, you're going to have to tell me how many now are in the aim, please. All right. Just before that, when you say we do some good covers as well. Yeah. We do To Be Someone by The Jam and we, we smash that out of the park. You do. I've got to be honest. We murdered up the junction by screaming. <laughs> Well, you know, what you say and what other people are saying, I don't. I disagree. I think you actually do a very good version of that. But what I was going to say was, uh, you know, on the, on the end of that, was um, you actually make these covers your own as well. You give yeah. them that own... You give it your sort of... Your own panache, your own sort of style to it as well. Oh, yeah. Which I think... Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, no, I think that's a yeah. really good idea. You know, it's no point yeah. in... You know, and, and dare I say, you know, I mean, we can listen to the jam on a jukebox, we can listen to the jam at home, we can listen to the jam on other entities out there on the social media. So, you know, we're going to see the aim. I want to see the aim do the jam, yeah. not play you the jam. You know what, Cookie? That's you know. exactly what I say at rehearsals. If absolutely. we're going to do a cover, do it our own way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, like you say, but, I mean, you smash them. You do, you smash them. And, um, yeah, we, we, we do try to keep them to a minimum, though. Yes, I do understand that because uh, you are what's known as an original cover, uh, not original covers, you're an original artist, um, you know, you play your own music, you know, you pen everything and, uh, you know, it, it's good stuff. It, let's be honest with you, you know, uh, plenty of albums out there. How many How many albums have you got out there at the moment? Uh, we've got, we've done three. Wow. Um, we're recording a fourth uh, and we just had that new single come out a couple of weeks ago, didn't we, Rise at Full? Yes. Um, so the fourth album, we've got a title for this one is The Master Reset. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. yeah who come yeah, up with yeah, that? Who so come up with that? There. It's Excellent. a 21-song rock opera epic. Hello. 21? 
Hey, Hello. 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 We're going to have to write three more songs if it's a 21. Oh, I've had a few runs and I, you know what I mean? I've had a few martinis and runs. I think it might be between 18 and 21. Possibly. OK. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. They actually haven't got a clue. Right. We'll, 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 throw, we'll throw out the junction on this. And why not indeed, yeah. You know, put, put that sort of nearer to the end when they've really enjoyed it and, you know, they've had a couple of runs themselves while they're listening to the album and they won't give a damn. They'll think it's brilliant, actually. It is a very good version, what you do. And, uh, you know, what you say is murdering. I say it's absolutely fantastic. You are a good live band. You really do oh, enjoy it. Yeah, I must admit. You, you to enjoy be honest, it. That is where we come to life. And it yeah. says, you know, it's nice recording songs. Don't get me wrong, it's lovely. But I had this conversation with Jay the other, the other night. It, it, it is good recording, but it's not until you play the songs live. For me, that's, that's yes. where I really enjoy it. I, I mean, I, I must admit, I don't massively enjoy the recording process at times, but live is where it all happens for me absolutely and i mean obviously you know when you're out there and you've got you know you've got your sort of like the, the, the faces out there in the crowd you're playing to that crowd and you know you, you find your strengths there you find what's working you can test your music uh, especially the new stuff that's there you can test it to your audience and see how they react to it and that gives you a gauge as well doesn't it yeah yeah absolutely, absolutely. because yeah. the um the rise and fall we actually played that in our last gig and it oh, went down a storm, if I yeah. remember rightly. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we knew it, he was on to a winner. Absolutely. And who does most, if not all, of your um, songwriting then? Well, it's between the two of us. Yeah, it, yeah, I'd say it probably goes three ways. Grant do ones that are, you know, all him. I'll have ones that are all me. And then there'll be ones that are lyrics by Grant and I'll do the music. Yeah. And then obviously the rest of the band put their bit to it. And, you know, that can't be... Um, you know what they add to it just brings it to life so, absolutely absolutely that's where it gets blurred who wrote it you know we, we have the original ideas but by the time the rest of the band put their bits to it yeah it, it sort of amalgamates all together and then you end yeah. up with a you know a fantastic track you know and obviously you know from my listening pleasure every single thing you've ever done has been fantastic you know and i'm not just saying oh, it because oh. you guys are on the radio right now and you know if i found a track that i thought mm, it's all right you know but to be honest with you everything you've done has been absolutely brilliant it's been you know um you know you, you, you sort of like brought down into um, some sort of sense of you know despair of some of your music not because the music is bad because the music is taking you down that path and then the next track is lifting you again and it's yeah. making you feel jolly and happy. Next one is making yeah. you feel a little bit more, oh, I'm going to have some of that. <laughs> you know, and, you know, it, literally your music, you know, the, the, the song, the lyrics, the, you know, everything combined really sort of, you know, it plays with your senses, especially if you, you know, and oh. I say this a lot, if you get yourself a decent set of headphones, you hear things that normally you yeah. wouldn't hear if you just play it on a, a CD player. You need yeah. to put headphones on as well to actually hear the sonic, um, yeah. the sonic journey, if you like. And I yeah. think you do play yeah, around yeah. with lots of tunes that normally, you know, you know, you wouldn't get live, or maybe you do because there's so many different instruments uh, that you guys play with uh, live on mm. stage. So while we've got this opportunity, um, I want you to name, not shame, but name. Everyone that's in the band, and what do they do? And uh, if you can leave Peter till last, because it might take five minutes. Okay, yeah, no worries. Well, obviously, obviously there's me uh, and Jamie. Mm -hmm. um, so, that, I mean, that's, that, that's, that's been the, the, the kind of the mainstay of the band since since we restarted it. Yep. Uh, we've got uh, Sam on backing vocals. The lovely Sam. And we've got, yeah, <laughs> oh, the lovely Sam. There we are. The squeaky door. <laughs> uh, the squeaky back doors uh, on, on backing vocals. You can tell he's had a run, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> we've got um, Billy Moody on drums. Fantastic little drummer. He's fantastic, uh, isn't he? You need to smile yeah. a bit more, oh. though. Yeah, he's an incredible drummer. He's only like 19. Well, I know. So. He's got so much more ahead of him, hasn't he? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, uh, we've got um, Tom Monks on keys mm -hmm. uh, and organ and Hammond and all that stuff. Yep. Uh, we've got... Uh, well, we did have Richie Mori on bass. Um, he's, he's just taking a little break to sort some sort some bits and pieces out. Okay. So, we've, for, some, for the live gigs coming up, we've got... Henry Green on bass. Okie dokie. Uh, which is the guy that the guy that played bass on the whole of the Days Like These album. Right. Uh, and uh, on 
all the other instruments, uh, mandolin, harmonica. Yes, you heard that right, guitar, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, mandolin. Yep, carry on. Uh, glockenspiel, <laughs> um, penny whistle, <laughs> penny farthing. Because <laughs> he does a wheelie on a penny farthing. Yes, he does. Um, I've seen him do it. <laughs> kazoo, a laptop. He does the um, What else did he play? Yeah, he played uh, the iPad, didn't he? Yeah, he played the iPad, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's Pete. Yeah, Pete plays all those instruments. Ah, uh, we're talking about Pete Sim there, and uh, he's a fantastic musician. I don't think there's nothing he can't play, is there? No, no absolutely. He's no. incredible. No, well, he between him and Tom Monks, there's not an instrument in the world that, that can't be played, which means when we record, it gives us the luxury... You know, of, of having the, the ability and the, and the confidence to use all these other instruments. Absolutely. And as again, you know, mentioning about having a good set of headphones, you'll get to hear all of these instruments played because obviously I'm not going to try and get too technical here because I'll be honest with you, I'll probably lose myself. But obviously when you're doing your, your mixing and your final uh, mix downs and stuff like that, obviously it's all layered. You know, there's so many things going on at the same time. Obviously it's impossible to play six instruments at the same time. So it's all layered, ladies and gentlemen, in a mixing studio yeah. environment. Yeah. Well, so you will get to hear. In the recording almost. process, when we do it, yeah. we always listen back to everything on headphones anyway. And of we course. Always, you know, pan it and whatnot and all that technical stuff. So when people do listen to it on headphones, yeah. they, they get they get like a violin coming into the left ear, you know, and like a, a clarinet coming into the right ear. You know, you get that experience of, of course. It coming from all over the show. And, and but, it is, it's unbelievable, you know, you get to hear that, and it, that's what I said, it takes you on that sonic adventure of music alone, let alone the really clever lyrics that, you know, accompany all of your tracks. So, you know, a lot of your uh, music is sort of storytelling as well, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. I'm, I've always, every every time I write a song, it's, it's, it's a story, you know, I don't, um, I've said it before, it's, it's easy just to sit and, rip off a couple of Oasis calls and <laughs> write a song about an ex-girlfriend and she loved me and I loved her. All right, I'll stop writing them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to write a song about your missus and stuff. Absolutely. No, but, but it is, and we know when we write a song that yeah. if it ain't good enough, it ain't good enough, you know, and we're not worried about hurting anyone's feelings, but, um, you know, every song we do is, is a story. Mm. And, and most of the stuff we write are, are based on true true stories. Oh, wow. You know, and, and that kind of, all the characters in the songs, yeah. you know, they are kind of real characters that we've come across in life. No, names might have been changed. Yeah, names, to protect the innocent, to protect the innocent. Oh, I wanted you to say that them. myself, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're all, yeah, they're all based, you know, like Oak Tree on the last album. That, you know, Jay wrote that about his Mrs. Wendy and... And that's what gives the song belief, doesn't it? That's what makes the song believable, and that's what correct, yeah, what absolutely, makes it yeah. stick with people. So, who, you know, who's your inspiration when it comes to music writing? Then, who who do you sort of like think? Oh, these were fantastic songwriters, and you know, I pull a lot of ins- you know inspiration from this person or persons. Who would you say it is? Uh, for, uh... You know, it's really hard to say. I mean, obviously, we've got uh, people that influence us, but when you're actually sitting down to write a song, yeah, you, you're not thinking. I don't think I've ever sat down and thought I'm going to try and write one like this or like something. It just it's, it comes out, and mm. obviously your influences. Then I mean the worst thing is my wife. Um, I'll be in the middle of writing something. She'll walk in the room and go, "Oh, that sounds just like," and I have to stop her because the minute she mentions the song and it's in my head, it, it just kills it. I can't. Of course, yeah. Can't gravitate away from it. So, but obviously you listen back after you've done it and you think, "Oh, that sounds a bit close to so and so," or that's. Of course, yeah. yeah. I suppose, you know, it's very, very difficult. I mean, obviously, I tip my hat, and I say this probably week in, week out to songwriters and musicians, because, A, I couldn't write a lyric, if it, you know, if my if, if my whole world depended on it. And to uh, pick up an instrument, I'm, I'm probably okay on the triangle, if I kept time. But oh, uh, if apart we'd have known that, we would have got you in. <laughs> <laughs> I remember doing, a, a, what was it, Park Life, uh, you know, Blur's one, um, yeah. for a charity a few years ago, and I absolutely was bricking it and uh, you know I'm used to being in front of crowds you know one a hundred and one people you know a thousand and one people it doesn't bother me you know and obviously um, you know I had to sort of like not really singing as such it's more of, sort of a, a, a speaking part and I just couldn't remember the words I had to get them up on my phone as I was uh, coming live up on the stage and uh, it was all for good charity and everything and uh, everyone loved it I hated it and I thought 
do you know, that is the first and last time I'm ever going to front any sort of band and do something like this. And uh, I was so, so nervous. I thought, if I get a word wrong, people are going to know it. You know, people know the tune. So, you know... I think, you know, you guys and everybody else out there that picks up a guitar or an instrument or sings or does everything, um, you know, it, it, it is brilliant. You know, you have to have that sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? You have to have that passion, that drive, that ambition to do yeah, what you do. Yeah, yeah. And it's fantastic, you know. And, you know, like I said, I'll tip my hat to any musician, live act, band, artist, whatever, um, because you're doing something that is pleasurable for every single other person standing out there holding a pint and a packet of peanuts. It's yeah, brilliant. Well, we're, we're privileged, you know, and we know that. This why when you come and see us, we never go through the motions because you're up there and people that are watching you would probably love to be up there doing what you're doing. Yeah. So you, you have to give it your all. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not bad at announcing stuff, you know. Hello! Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have the aim. Uh, I can do that, no problems at all. Oh, guess, what, guess what you're doing in August? <laughs> I'm washing my hair. Right. Bring, uh, <clears throat> bring your triangle with you as well. <laughs> ah, uh, I'm not sure where I've packed it. Because I've you actually moved... the back and tink. Yeah, it's, it's in one of the me boxes uh, I've packed and uh, I haven't unpacked everything yet. So I'll, I'll I'll let you know. I'll come across it one day. Um, I'm sure it's there somewhere. And I'll probably forget where the, uh, you know, the bit that you hit it with. You know, I'll, I think I'll put that in a different box. So that might take a few more months or years to find that bit as well. Right, oh, anyway. Well, not sure we've got a spare one. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you have. You ain't getting out of it. No, no. I, I think I'll leave that to Peter because obviously he knows how to uh, ping a mean triangle. Uh, we've as got we say. We've a kazoo, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly do you know one day I'm actually going to see you guys play and uh, Peter's going to walk on with a one man band outfit on he's going to have a lot isn't he <laughs> that would be fantastic in some gore blimey old trousers yeah, that would be that would fantastic because be I can stand at the bar and have a drink well why not yeah just let him do the whole lot he could <laughs> yeah. be hello I'm Peter Sim and I'm the aim for the whole evening <laughs> <laughs> Because, like I said, he can do absolutely everything. You're very lucky to have him with you, and uh, you, he, he, is, he is a fantastic guy and so approachable as well. Now, I yeah. believe that he's had his hair cut, is that right? He has, and you know, it hasn't weakened him in any sense. He can still play the guitar. I was worried. I was worried, you know, because you do worry about the, um, you know, the uh, Samson thing, you know, when he had his hair cut and uh, did he lose all of his strength. So I was worried no. about Peter when he had his uh, locks, well, basically lopped off. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but he's a <laughs> dope, doesn't he? Really? Absolutely. I do apologise about the language there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, shit. Sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. 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 So, even though we're on the internet radio, and, uh, yeah, we can, little little things like that we can bypass, and, uh, yeah. oh, goodness for that. Well, good, the Jamie's fault, isn't it? Oh, oh, yeah. Me. I didn't say it. <laughs> the good news is, um, Pete's there, he donated it to a charity. Grant. Oh, excellent. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and that must have gone a long, long way. I'm currently walking around with Pete's hair glued to my head. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Now, that would be a sight, wouldn't it? Right, let's yeah. move on then. So, um, how was lockdown for you guys? I mean, obviously, I asked this question in a sort of general sense, because obviously lockdown is lockdown. You know, obviously, right at the beginning, we weren't allowed to do anything. You know, we had to ask permission to sort of like really even pick our own noses, you know, and that's with, uh, with or without a face mask on. So, how was it for you guys as musicians, I suppose? Firstly, I want to ask you. Uh, frustrating. Because mm, mm. um, I, I think we all we was all in agreement, like when we, before the first lockdown last March, yeah, we did a gig in Reading uh, for March of the Mods. Okay, yeah. And I think when we we did an hour set and we came off, and I think every one of us looked at each other and we thought we, we we've hit a peak here. Do you know what I mean? We, we've we've got ourselves as a band to a level that certainly in the last five years for me was. The, the, a level that we had never achieved up until that point. We, yeah. we was, uh, and I don't mean to sound big-headed, but uh, we 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 got to that level where we was, oh, this is fantastic, mm, mm. and and everything for the first time in in a long time, everything had gelled, and we had every little piece of the puzzle in the right places. Whereas maybe before, you know, over the years we've been too loud or too fast or uh, everything had just got to a point where our life set was for me perfect 
Yes. And and we had loads of gigs lined up, and it was if this is how we are now, we can only even get better from this, and we'll, we'll be a complete package. And then COVID came in and knocked it all to pieces. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you know, like one gig in a year, um, and it's frustrating because we we like I say we'd got to a level where I'd always wanted us to be, and we'd got there. And it, it was incredible, the gig that we played in Reading. It was fantastic. I think by far the best gig we've done as a band. Uh-huh. Um, and then sort of everything sort of stopped, you know. And then from March to August, we did the one gig at the Holroyd and we, we picked up where we left off and then thought, oh, you know, when are we going to play next? No one knew. No. I never ever thought it'd be another year, you know, before we was going to play. Um so it's very frustrating, really, really frustrating. And, you know, you, you, you try not to sort of lose faith in everything, but, you know, even the most faithful person it, it, is testing, you know, the last year. Well, absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But you have to turn it into a positive. I mean, what I'd done, I'd, the first lockdown, I had all that time. I'd end up setting up a home studio mm-hmm. and um, and recording. And it's, and it's a different way of doing it. A lot of the songs I... I normally write on an acoustic guitar so there's a danger they'll start saying the same so i've got the new studio and then you start the writing process in a different way i mean rise and fall started with just the drum loop oh right okay from there so now that's a weird way of doing things obviously you know i'm not musically trained by any means and you know usually it's either a piano or an acoustic guitar that you sort of like set the uh the boundaries the rules of uh you know songwriting i suppose but starting it from a drum yeah, I just I found a sort of funky drum loop. I thought I like that. Got the guitar down, found a riff, and just built it from there. And then added some keys. And the good thing with the having a recording studio, the, yeah. there's no real such thing as a demo now. You you start building the track up, and then all the other guys in the band are, are sort of really savvy with. They've all got their studios. Yes. So just a matter of emailing the track to them. They're doing their bit, emailing it back to me, mixing it in. Yeah. And we just built it up like that. Wow. So I had the music for that, but didn't have the lyrics. So all I had was um, the, oh, here it comes, a rise and fall. Yes. Grant come round, done as usual. Go away for 24 hours and bang. Bang, it's there. It. Yeah, he's done the whole yeah. He's done the whole lot, you know. I and mean, some of our best songs are done that way. We've done that with, what was it, Ballad of the Lone yeah, Captain Ballad. Captain Morgan. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. You know, that must really, you know, for me, you know, trying to rhyme, you know, some music, uh, sorry, some lyrics together to music must be very, very difficult. And for, and, and I suppose for you, Grant, is it just sort of comes naturally, I suppose. Um, yeah, because I've always grown up listening to rhyme and poem and, and songwriters and bands where it's obviously the emphasis is, is rhyming and... Yeah. Um, and, I, and I, although I'm not, you know, although I don't, come across as one I, I do like the you know, the old school rap and stuff like that and yeah you know growing up in Brixton and listening to all that and I, and I just love the art of rhyme uh, so I think as soon as you kind of find that first line uh, and you can find something to fit in the second line for me it then it then comes quite easy naturally easy to to finish a song what what the hardest bit is is coming up with the first two lines once I once I can do that the rest comes very naturally and that's i suppose you know that's a real good gift to have and uh please 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 you know obviously keep that you know muscle memory working and uh, get your pen working at all times because if you leave it alone um you know there's a good possibility that it might never come back so you know it's always you know it's always nice to have it in the background you know and uh just fall back on it you know once in a while just to keep it going until obviously this lockdown yeah. <clears throat> you know fingers crossed what? in just under a month hopefully yeah yeah well, there's, there's better songwriters than me that have said this in the past, but you do have songs that just seem to fall into your lap. Mm. You know, you, you end up writing them, and the, the, the ones that take half an hour or so, and then you, you end up with this song, and you think, well, where did that come from? Yeah, of course, And yeah. they tend to be the best ones. I mean, you know, just for uh, you know, for, for an example, with uh, That's Entertainment, um, you know, Paul Weller apparently wrote that, coming home from a pub very, very drunk yeah. one evening, yeah. in, in, you know, just in a few short minutes. Uh, it wasn't until mm. a bit later that I found that he wrote about half of it. Um, the other half, I think he pinched from a, a poem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but nevertheless, the, you know. Thing, you, you, you have ones like that. Mm. You have ones you 
need to work on. So you'll get some of the lyrics and then you'll sit on it. But what I tend to do is I'll sit on it for a while. Yeah. And if it's not happening, it then gets sent to Grant and say, look, come up with something for this. Absolutely. So, you know, it's a good the, collaboration. the more you have to, to dig to find it, you tend up tend not being the best, you know. I see, yeah. So, uh, you know, for me, you know, you know, when when you when you're writing a song, then if it becomes sort of like um, you know, a real hassle, a real struggle, is it worth? If it, is it worth sort of proceeding, going forward, or like you say, is it worth sort of sitting on, bin it, put it in the bin, bin it, or keep it on a bit of paper, put it away in your yeah. songbook, and leave it for six months' time when you sort of come up with something else, and you think. Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on, yeah. I had a couple of lines before that might work, and mm. you know, um, I think like song high and dry off the first album. Um, I nicked a couple of lines that I had in a completely different song, but I just thought, well, it don't suit that song. No, like, these couple of lines really suit this other one that that I'm writing. Well, that was another one, weren't it? When we was in the studio, I think the rest of the band that was the first album. The rest of the band had gone out for a smoke or drink or something yeah and i was just playing the guitar part and grant went what's that so i don't know just noodling <laughs> and then he got his he got his little songbook out of his bag and and that was created in 10 15 yeah. minutes that's yeah. amazing that During really is amazing yeah. you know and that is uh for me again you know that is so inspirational you know i look up to that you know because i think for someone that can do something like that, I mean, I, I, you know, everyone's got an art. Everyone's got something that they're really good at. Um, I'm still looking to see what I'm actually really good at doing. But um, for, <laughs> for me personally, you know, when I see, you know, musicians up there and they're sweating and they're pouring their heart and soul into their lyrics, their guitar strings or banging a piece of, you know, um, you know, a, a drum kit or, you know, blowing down a saxophone, they are committed to making your life that much better by providing a bit of light relief and entertainment. So for me, yeah. you know, that always deserves one of these <laughs> every single time because, well, think, you know... I, it, think the, I think the biggest thing as well is, um, or the biggest hurdle is when you've written it, is to then play it to the rest of the band. Of course, yeah, and see what they Cause say. What, yeah, because, I mean, there, there are some I get really excited for that's so good. And, and what I tend to do is I'll WhatsApp it to Grant. Yeah. And then if you get the old tumbleweed go and you think, oh, it's been a day or two, I've not heard nothing. <laughs> it's, 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 that one's pony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness me. And for those that, are not, then, for those that don't know what pony is... is um... Straight away going, we're recording that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For those that don't know the terminology of pony, then... Uh... <clears throat> I'm a busy man. And yeah, look it up, man. look it up somewhere. So obviously, and it's rubbish. <laughs> of course, yeah, absolutely. So obviously... Like, uh... you know what, like one of our other songs... Yeah. Ballad of the Lonely from Days Like These album. I mean, that came from me just sitting on a train. Um, it funny, I, I went up, I went up town to see um, that, what's that old Irish kids band? Oh, yeah, the old Irish, U2? I don't know. No, not U2. Uh, <laughs> Irish kid. Uh, I went to see this album launch. Oh, Stripes. By the Stripes, that's it. Yes. Right, so I went, I went up to see the, this album launch by the Stripes. I was sitting on a train. I had a few drinks. I was sitting on a train and I see the reflection of this girl staring at me in the window. And then, and then the first line was... Uh, I can't remember the first line. The girl in the reflection. The girl, the girl in the reflection keeps on grabbing my attention. And I thought, well, I'll keep hold of that. Keep hold of that till I get home. That's but by the time I got off the train, it was a fast train from Charing Cross to Walpitton. So it was about 22 minutes. Yep. Um, I'd, I'd had the whole song in my head and I was tapping it in my phone typing it up and then Jamie had a lovely lovely bit of music on the guitar yeah and he came round after work one night and we sat in my front room around my old poxy laptop took about an hour to like load up and then uh, and we sat and put this lovely bit of music to the lyrics of um, a schizophrenic sort of nut alter ego nutcase of a song wow really. and it really worked yeah it really worked that's incredible Really, that is really incredible. And we've really had a few incredible. people say to us, like Night in an Homeless is another one. We've, we've had a few people that say, you have a really good knack of putting really hard, sad lyrics 
to lovely, happy melodies. Yeah, that's again, you know, you've got that wave of despair along with really good music, yeah. which you don't know well, which way... Well, accidentally. It's, it's, it's a whole thought process, you yeah. know, and, and, and we do that for a reason. Let's, let's put some really hard, harsh, sad, cutting lyrics to really happy music. A bit like Style Council, All Gone Away. Yes. You know, it's a really hard-hitting subject put to a lovely happy bit of music absolutely we've got, we've, we've got a beautiful track on the new album that um Brand oh, wrote um we almost had it this. for the last album but it didn't quite come together but between him and tom um what they've done it, it's, it's just it's beautiful it's an absolutely amazing i I'm mean it wouldn't be out of place on the style cancels confession of a pop group i'm so looking it's, forward to this new album oh, it's, boys, it's, you know, it's really incredible well the, uh, the album's very eclectic if the last one had sort of lots of different tunes this i think there's one or two tracks on it that are really going to surprise people absolutely yeah. now i've got the rise and fall obviously you sent that over to me and i thank you very much indeed for that and it's got two tracks on it so obviously the rise and fall okay which obviously yep. you've got judges and tongue uh the song rises on there and uh <clears throat> what's the other song called well it's called the rise and fall the radio <laughs> edit and old potty mouth has been blanked out <laughs> <laughs> so you can play it on the radio because <laughs> you know what he's like. Just cast your mind back five or ten minutes ago. Yes, I will. Yeah. yeah so which yeah, ones? We do wh- drop the f bomb in it. That's so it. So which ra- ones? Which? There is a radio edit. <laughs> is that number two? Although when, although when you played it last week, you did do the f bomb one. Yes, I did. Uh, that was track number one. Then, so uh, I'll put track number two on. Mate, you which know, Cookie, I, I, I don't like swearing, but sometimes a song really, really needs it. Do you know what I mean? Now, I was going to ask you about that, and obviously, you know, with uh, <clears throat> you know the potty mouth lyrics that have to be in there. Um, you know, um, do they really have to be in there, or is there another alternative word that one could use, or does it just not fit in? I think sometimes it, it calls for it. You yeah. Know, it, 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 we do write songs, and you think, well, you could replace it with that. Mm. And if it, if it works, it works. But if it sounds fake, you know, if, if the F-bomb's needed, the F-bomb's needed, and it has to go in. Absolutely. You know, and and if you're writing about mm. all the crooked um, people at Westminster, then it's needed, isn't it? <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and you know what? I mean, I know I know it's not great, you know, to, to hear swear words when there's youngsters around. And I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's not right. But but we're talking about a, a, an emotive subject written by adults, sung by adults, yeah. po- probably being listened to by 90% of adults. And, and let's be honest, we're all thinking the same, aren't we? Of course we are, you know, and, absolutely. Uh, and sometimes there's no other way to put that in a descriptive way in the song, but just to be brutally honest about it. Okay, um, that's fair, fair enough. And fair I, call, I, came, yeah. I grew up in an area where, you know what, if someone thought you was... Are wrong and they tell you you're wrong you know? there's, no <laughs> point in, there's no point in in hiding it um the good news is that there's two tracks on the new album that hasn't got swearing on it oh well that's fantastic that's great because <laughs> <laughs> it is no, a night i'll tell you what it's a nightmare but, for me because unfortunately i have to then go back into the production side of things especially if i'm going to play them on the radio and i have to sort of like go <clears throat> right okay i'll have to put a little bleep in there and i have to put a little bleep in there i know i shouldn't but obviously for radio versions yeah, uh, yeah, you know yeah, i'll put a bleep that, in and there. that's why we got because we had it mixed and mastered, yeah. and then it was like, hang on, if we want to get this sort of spread out, there's going to be certain stations that won't play it, so you, you have to do it. Absolutely. So. Like I said, I played it last week, and uh, I went, oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> he's <laughs> done, it to, he's done it to me again. <laughs> but if you, listen, if you listen to it, maybe, if you've had a drink, it, it could sound like I'm saying the word folks. I think you were actually. The I think it folks. did. Yeah, I think it did say folks actually, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I, so, thought, uh... I mean, if we <laughs> yeah, have not yeah, the but, greedy folks. Well, what I, if we had thought about it properly, I did think um, crooked fakes. Ah, words, there we go. You say that now. You didn't say that at the time. No, I'm telling you now, aren't I? <laughs> hey, telling me now, aren't you? Telling yeah. me now we've recorded it, and yeah. mixed it, and mastered it. Hang on a minute. Can you hear that? I've actually got it, so, you know, it's a bit late. Um, <laughs> now, obviously, I've just uh, head over to facebook.com, and uh, obviously I've just gone onto your page, and I'll just tell everyone how to find you. So type in the search 
bit there, the aim, and there you will find their first page there, which is absolutely, you know, you're on the ball with it, you, you know, your social media animals, everything's on there that we need to have. Obviously, you know, you're well promoting the uh, Rise and Fall, which you should be, you know, you should be very proud of it. It's a great track, uh, even though it has got a, <clears throat> a naughty word called folk in it. Um, you know, but it, it really is good. Um, we can find, obviously, some links there to buy it. It's £3.50, yeah. including the PMP, ladies and gentlemen. That's postage and packing. Uh, the YouTube, there as well. Now, um, if I click onto the YouTube, I won't play it because, obviously, it'll come through in it's a second. No, we don't want that. Um, but, obviously, um, you know, do, do you do videos? Is, is videos your thing, or is it more... Uh, do you know, yeah, I'd love to. Mm -hmm. like, like, here's the thing. Like, obviously, with lockdown, we ain't been able to see each other. No. Uh, but we're all working lads as well, you know. And Absolutely, yeah. It, it's, hard, it's hard enough getting seven people in a room all in one place at the same time to rehearse. Um, and, like, me personally with work and all that, I, I don't... I, my time is, is so kind of, like, precious at the moment. Yes. Um but I'd love to be able to just take a weekend off from everything and all get together and film a video. That would be great. So if there it? are any like filmmakers and editors and whatnot out there, then give us a shout and let's let's make because we got some of the new tunes on the new album. I've got like, ideas running around my head for 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 videos and but it's just having the people that can come and help us do it and take the time to do it. Or well, the next possible single, we're going to need a yacht, a shell suit, and some leg warmers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that gives you a clue as to what sort of sound you've got. Do you know? Around the Caribbean. Do you know? My mind is boggled already. You know, shell suits <laughs> and leg warmers. Oh, my and, goodness. And me. also, also we've got a new song on the album that would be a great single called Bell End Close. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I know plenty of them, so I ain't going to be worried about finding extras for the video. No, but it's just getting somebody to to that's able to have all the equipment and to film it and edit it. And well, wow. I'm not the most technical of people out there. I ain't going to lie. Well, you I'm going to so, be um, abs well. I'm going to be absolutely honest with you now. Well, when I go and do some videoing of myself, you know, when I'm doing live stuff and everything, and it's it's few and far between because, like you say, it's so hard to actually get some time off from normal yeah. work and stuff like that. You know, what pays the bills. Um, but when I go there, I use <clears throat> my own mobile telephone, which has a compressor in it, which basically means it won't distort when you guys are very, very loud. It won't distort the sound. So that is an absolutely perfect thing to use um, to get some images, get some uh, live footage of you guys playing. Um, so what I was saying to you is, uh, if you can get a couple of different phones and clip them onto your mic stands or you know some stands and get some footage of you guys playing, there's half of your video already there. Then obviously you just got to uh, do the other bits and pieces. You know, if you want to do some silliness down a high street or in a back garden or wherever, you can still do it on phones. They are that good and that sophisticated now. You don't need great big cameras lugging around on tripods. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah, I know. I've I interviewed. Know, I I've like interviewed... all that romanticism of having a big film crew following your back, <laughs> with all the big cameras on their shoulders, <laughs> saying "Cut, action, cut." Yeah. I think yeah. clap a board. First thing you need We're to do, have to though, check the budget. I think absolutely, but you know, definitely. <laughs> I want a chair with directo on the back. <laughs> you have got yes. something written on the back of your chair, but it doesn't say directo. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It, oh, it, Cookie, Cookie, it, Sam's coming. She wants to say hello. Oh, can yes. Sam say hello? Yeah, of course she can. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah she wants to say hello. Yeah, hey, Sam, how are you doing? Hello. Hello, Hi. Sam, how are you? Don't, don't, no swearing. No swearing. No, no swearing. swearing. Try not Sam, to, we know yeah. what you're like. Well, Sam, I know that <laughs> I you have don't. Got mouth, yep. No, you haven't. You're such a lovely young lady <laughs> and you don't use any of those vulgar words. I know no, that. No, I don't. No, I'm you just don't. I'm married to that vulgar man instead. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I don't know. You put up with him. <laughs> Honestly, that I've door. Heard call, I've, heard it, I've heard her call him a few things. So. I, I bet. But I think it's all <laughs> well deserved. Nice. All well deserved, Sam, though, I think, yes? Of course, yeah. <laughs> and what's this about your squeaky door? Come on, sort that door out. You need some oh, WD 40 on it or some free and one oil. Well, this is Grant's bar, not mine. Ah, righty. <laughs> so, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. Good. Are you looking for... Will you stop squeaking that door, for goodness well, sake? See, it's not me. <laughs> see, all the time Grant was on the phone and Sam was squeaking it, he was having a pop at her. Now she's on the phone. He's, he's, 
squeaking the door. I know. What's he like? It's unbelievable, isn't he? So you know, it's not the Doris's wallet. Ah, that, that's probably more like it. Yes. Yes. Uh, if you if you do want to get a drink, uh, yeah, don't ask him. Right, um, Sam. Uh, what was I going to say to you now? I've totally forgotten now. It's thrown me off there with the squeaky door and wallet. Um, are you looking forward to getting out of lockdown and going back out there? And oh, uh, God, I can't wait. I bet you so can't. So bored. I bet. And you you such you know you you're such a great. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, obviously, a backing singer, you're fantastic. You know, you've got such a nice range of um, talented voice. Um, what I'm trying to say is you really, you know, you really lift up the songs that, you know, obviously um, the guys make. Oh, and uh, it, it's nice to see you there. You, you're smiling all the time. Doesn't doesn't your face ache when you're smiling all the time and singing? Because <laughs> it's brilliant. It really is lovely to see that because you see some um, singers and, of course, they've got to concentrate so you don't see them smile, but you seem to smile all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, you're up there. You're having a laugh, aren't you? Absolutely. It's nice to be out and do things and enjoy yourself. Of course. You can't be right old misery on stage. No, no, oh, definitely not. That. Definitely not. No, we were talking <laughs> to the guys earlier, and, you know, you've got to put your sort you of... Know, like, to entertain people. Yeah, you've got to put 100% into your um, act, into your performance every single time you're out there, because, obviously, you know, it's your, it's your audience, you know, that they, they come to see yeah. you, they, they, they love you, and, uh, you know, it, that's what you do, I suppose, really. So uh, what sort of got you into singing? Grant. <laughs> <laughs> In a word, I kind of always been into like singing and stuff in the background. And yeah. My family have all been into music over the years, but I've been too scared to do it. And then Grant basically told me, "You're I'm doing it." Be back in vocals for about two years. <laughs> oh and wow! Then I finally folded. Oh, so he worked his <laughs> he worked his magic, did he? <laughs> yeah, I suppose my first gig was supporting Madness, but you know. Oh my I'm gonna goodness! Go, go big. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. You go big, then go home, don't you? With uh, obviously, yeah. you know, uh, definitely a big feather in the cap there. Oh my goodness me! Tell me a bit more about that then. What the first gig? Yeah, go on, tell us all about it because I didn't know about this. <laughs> well, it was quite a good laugh. It was fun to do, and that's pretty much all I knew, really. <laughs> wow! Did you get to meet any of the uh, guys from Madness? Um. No, they basically they they flew in last minute, got on stage, played, and got off, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, really? So you didn't get a chance to sort of like say hello to any of them, or was it just a sort of a wave and a wink? Yeah, we, yeah, we, we we nicked all their drink and their wristbands. (laughs) (laughs) You know all those people you had in the group chat before that were meant to be there. Well, they were all backstage. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they were as well. Oh, my goodness me! Yeah. Definitely, definitely oh, that, uh, definitely that saucy one, Chris Avis. <laughs> yeah. I it's know. It's the way our band goes. You just get in early, yeah. get there, get all the bits and pieces you need, and then enjoy the rest of the day. Basically, blow the squeaky doors off. Absolutely. Yeah, you cannot whack a good squeaky door. I think I think you need to get uh, Peter to play the squeaky door on one of your uh, live sets. That would be fantastic. Well, you say that the the actual squeaky door is a tequila drinks cabinet, and it is on one of the songs. Oh my goodness me! It's I just not say, a squeaking. It's, it's a knock. It's in- Spelling close, isn't it now? Yeah. yeah. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get your album in my grubby little mitts here and put my headphones on and have a good old listen to that track and obviously all the other tracks as well because, yeah. you know, <laughs> your music is, like I said, it's so lifting and, uh, you know, so poignant as well. There's so much going on. You don't know where to turn. You don't know what to listen to. And it's so, like I said, it's like a sonic adventure. And uh, for those that have never come across you guys before, I would say, look, Go and visit the back catalogue. Um, Sam, what's your favourite album? Or what's your favourite track? Do you have one? Oh, my God. There's I, too many. I know. You've got so many. But do you have a sort of personal favourite that you really like to perform to? Um, the ones that kind of mean most to me, probably. I call it Tracy Slater. Which one's that called? <laughs> what you see is what you get. What's that one called? <laughs> They've all got different names in my head. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they all kind of, like, a lot of the, the stories that Grant has written particularly mean yeah. stuff to us. Yes. Um, and, yeah, that's that's pretty much where I grew up in that area and stuff like that. So those people are real people for 
that um, I know. And as obviously we mentioned before, obviously you change a lot of the names, obviously to protect the uh, the innocent <laughs> out there. But uh, it it, yeah, it's, it fascinates me. And I mean, obviously, you know, we were talking about Grant and uh, his songwriting ability, and obviously Jamie's as well. And uh, it's amazing what they can do. And um, do you, do you put in your own lyrics as well at all, Sam, or is it just sort Sometimes. of like you're talking to the co-writer of Do's a Mom? Ah, oh, there we, we all, are. We all sat around the dining table that we sat around now. Yeah. I mean, that was another song I had. I had the song. I was really pleased with the chorus, but the um, I rushed the, the verses. Yeah. Sent them to Grant, and I knew my own art that they weren't up to scratch. And we come round. I come round Grant's, and uh, me, Grant, and Sam sat around the table and rewrote the verses and. Try to work out yeah. how to say two yeah, tr- in French. Yeah. <laughs> try to say, uh, how, how do you pronounce do them on? And we still don't. No, no. <laughs> 12 lovers. Yeah. We know it. It's commonly um, known as I 12 mean, lovers. Obviously, obviously, you know, French boutique. Yes. Yeah, well, Gabriella, we, 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 was, we saw her and we played it to her and she yeah. went, you do know you're not singing two lovers, you're singing about many lovers. <laughs> <laughs> So, in, in fact, well, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, it. that track is all about an orgy. Then, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Lovely. It wasn't wasn't meant to, but no. that's how it ended up. That's how it ended up. You know, that's how many orgies end up. Where, you know, it just starts with two, and then more people arrive I and think, throw their keys I in, don't the, they? I think the clues about the keys in the uh, bowl Key, at keys the start, in the bowl at the uh, front door. That's the one. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness me! And is there any song that you wish you wrote that's uh, obviously been you know written by somebody else? I mean, I, I'll ask all three of you that actually because um, it's a good question. I think because it gets you thinking. Thinking, and you think, oh, I wish I wrote that song. Oh, I wish I performed that song. Um, so I'm being I... asked to pass over. Hang on. Okay. I, I, I wish I'd wrote this a very deep sea. Okay. I was going to pick another. Council. I was going to pick another style council song. I wish I wrote Paris match. Great song. Absolutely. Also, uh, also I mean, uh, there's there's ones when Grant comes out with this song. I think I wish I'd wrote that one. <laughs> you got in there before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but yeah, I, 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 I'd I wish I'd wrote Nothing Changes. All right. One of Jamie's, yeah. That's good, though. You've got that friendly rivalry between you guys, but obviously you work so well together. You see that on stage, and obviously you see that when we're... You know, we're, we're having a chat now. We can hear it in your voices that, you know, you love one another, you respect one another, and most importantly, you work with each other so well, you know, when it comes to your well, songwriting abilities. Well, well nothing, nothing changes. I wrote that because um, Grant had written one, I think, in... Sun has never shone. Sun has never shone. He had Sun has never shone, and I'm like, Jesus, I need to up my game, yeah? Yeah. And then... Nothing changes. Come along. Here we go. And that's good because you're pushing one another to create something better and better and better. And do you think you know from your music from the you know from the first album and moving forward? Obviously, you know with this album that you're creating now. Do you think? Do you think um, you know the, the get that squeaky door sorted <laughs> out? It's on the go again. It's on the go again. again. Um, what I was saying was um, you know from the first album, and I'll never turn around and say. Uh, that album was shockingly rubbish or anything like that because it wasn't, and it's it's a really good album. But um, do you think you've improved, or do you think you're you know keeping yeah. along oh, that even yeah. kill? I, or... I mean, there's there's a there's a song on the new album, right? Yep. Called One Three One A Annalee Hill, and I like to call it my two part opera. Although everyone laughs at me when when I tell them it's that. Yeah. And it I'm and it's a song Mercury, it's a song it. basically that kind of tells a story of the aim from when we first started back in uh, late 80s early 90s wow um so but when you say about you know me and jamie we work well what we got to think about is the way that that we started was you know i, I when when i wanted to reform the band yes I, and i wanted to find the other two original members you know tony duke and ralph mcdowell yeah i couldn't find ralph mcdowell uh and then sadly by by pure pure fluke um roy duke came back into my life and he and i said i'll oh, tell tony to ring me and yeah well he said oh look you know tony's passed away a couple of weeks ago whilst you know i was sort of writing songs for the first album yeah how sad um, yeah yeah and that sort of really knocked the stuffing out of me and i thought oh, i'm never gonna get this band back together and then by some weird quirk of fate i knew jamie from facebook and gigs and stuff yeah uh and then just through 
quirk of fate of being at Carnaby Street, the right place, the right, t- right time. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they say everything happens for a reason, don't they? You know, he came over and said, you know, I've, I've heard you, you know, recording a song at the studio and whatnot and stuff. And mm. I said, yeah, yeah. And he, he, he said, can I come down? You know, I, I never knew that he could play or anything at this point. Um, so he, he, he came down to the studio where he was recording Lion's Pride for the Food for All charity. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and he came down and he picked a guitar up and started strumming it. And I turned around and looked at him and said, well, you never said you could play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. So I said, right, get in there and put some acoustic guitar down on the track. Wow. You know, so we, we, we started off from nothing. You know, of course. It started off from nothing, and, yeah, yeah. And to go now recording the fourth album, and to be playing all the gigs that we've played, yeah. Th- there's not one person out there that I, I would have wanted to do this with. Oh, of course. So I've got so nice. down my leg. <laughs> so when you say like we work well together, yeah, that that's five or six years of of real hard graft. It's five, six years of building a friendship, trusting yeah. each other. It's yeah. hard graft. We've put the hours in. We've put the effort in. We've we've made sure we make sure that whenever anyone comes to one of our gigs or to the studio, we make them feel like they're part of the team. And uh, that's why we call them yeah. the Amiacs. We, we we make them feel like they're part of it because we know how lucky we are. Yes, yeah, and absolutely. we want to share that. And what we do is like every schoolboy's dream. Apart from scoring a winner in an FA Cup final, you know it, what we're doing is every schoolboy's dream. Yeah. So we like to share that, and we have the same philosophy on on making music and, and that comes you know, from both, and that really does come I, from I'd your life say he's yeah. got a probably more eclectic like of music but we, yep. we like the same stuff you know we like the same clothes mm-hmm. and it's just it, it's i couldn't have done it with anyone else i could have done it with someone else of course yeah. i could you know it's ridiculous of course it could have, but it wouldn't have been as good and special as what this is no indeed and you know you can see that you see the chemistry live on stage you, you hear it in your songs you hear it on the albums in the singles that you release and you know generally you know you two guys you know you just work with one another so effortlessly it yeah. seems that way i mean obviously you put the effort in a lot of people yeah. don't realize this but you know for every 45 minutes set you're putting down many many hours of rehearsal rehearsals and yeah, yeah. you know practice yeah, but... and you know sitting there and brainstorming on your next song what you're going to do what you're going to call it yeah, yeah. you know people don't yeah, see that for the many people for the many people that are still hopefully still listening to this like the ones that are on that that messenger group for all those people most of those people have been to the studio um and spent time with us and yeah and drank with us and sang with us and recorded with us in the studio so each one of them know the graph that we put in and I think you and, took a page. And, and, we're, and, yeah. and we do it for the reasons that we do it. Absolutely. I think you took a page out of Paul Weller's uh, book when uh, he said, like, you know, I want to do rehearsals, you know, the warm ups and everything, you know, before we do the live music. And if there's fans out there, bring them in. You know, get them out of the cold, get them yeah. out of the rain and the wet, you know, and bring them in, you know. And he was loyal to his fans, and he still is, you know. Um, you know, But when he was in with the jam, you know, that's what they done. They looked after their, um, you know, their, 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 their fans, and that's what well, you, you do. You, you have to, yeah. you have to do it because, you know, these people work hard all week. Yeah. And then they've got a couple of days at the weekend where they can do whatever they want to do, but they choose to come and see us, and it yeah. means the world to us. And I think, you know, that shows, I mean, obviously I've seen you guys play live and, you know, you're just so warm, you know, you, you have fun with the audience, you know, um, you, you really sort of get them going, you, you, you feed them into a frenzy. I think that is what you do. But that's the thing as well is, I mean, we're, we're, we're just them. We're, we're the same as them. We love going to gigs. We mm. love our music. We're just in the privileged position that, yeah, we can write songs and we can play. Yeah. And we and we have the privilege of actually doing it. But Perfect, yeah, absolutely. Let's turn this around yeah. on its head then, OK? You're an yes. audience... And, and this is why, oh. sorry, this is why, yeah, going gone. back to that madness gig, Yeah, right, we, we got properly right, right, royally turned over by the promoter that day. So we thought, in typical own fashion, you know, right, We'll, we'll 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 get our own back, you know. So we like Nick thirty of their wrist madness VIP backstage wristbands. Right? <laughs> so we gave them out to all our mates. So in our backstage area, they gave us. There was like there was like about thirty five, thirty six of us all wow. in the backstage bit. The promoters come in. She's done her pieces when she's come in. I bet. Um, and she's gone. This area is just for band members. I said, well, th- this is this is the bad members. And she said. Anyone in the band put their hands up. So 36 people all put their hands <laughs> up. Oh, <laughs> <I'm sparkly. laughs> 
<laughs> but I just couldn't put their hands up. And I thought, you know what? No, we, we've been through so much. No, no promoter is going to turn us over. So no. we kind of turned it around. We nicked the wristbands. Yep. Whether it was right or wrong, you know. But we give them to our mates. Yep. And all our mates come backstage and hung out with us, having a drink. And that's what we do. Hey, Robin, you know I mean? Robin we, we Hood. We try to look after everyone. That Absolutely. Comes to see us, I mean, right? Robin Hood. You know, he stole from the rich and gave back to the poor. And I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah, that just, is exactly just, what you do. We just nick from Suggs and go back <laughs> to the Amex. <laughs> and I'm sure he'll love you for that. I'm sure he's tuned in right. <laughs> you know, I had a drink with him once um, with Suggs. Uh, I used to work up on, in Candom Town, and uh, I went into the Prince of Wales pub in Candom Town, and uh, I noticed this guy at the other end of the bar, and uh, it almost finished his pint, and I ordered a couple for me and my friend and um you know i kept looking at him and i thought i know him from somewhere i know him from somewhere and you know i was just get, plucking up the courage and thinking right i'm gonna have to look a right nana here and go and ask him who are you because i know you from somewhere <laughs> he got up and left as he was leaving my mate walked in in the same door and uh, as he's walked out he goes oh look it sucks from madness i went damn <laughs> but i did have a drink with him even though he was one end of the bar and i was at the other but uh, i didn't recognize him he's such a tall fella yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But there we go. That's my claim to fame with uh, madness anyway. I love madness. I yeah, do like yeah, madness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What I was going to say is um, it's turned around on its head now. So obviously, you know, we've spoke about a lot about you guys being on stage and obviously being musicians. So when you're not doing that, what is your, you know, your go to band? It can be unsigned. It can be a signed band. It can be someone that we really know and love or someone that we haven't heard of before. Oh, oh mine's Green Day. Okay, right. Have you ever yeah. got to see him play live? I've seen Green Day many times. Excellent, excellent. I love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're quite heavy, though, aren't yeah. they? They're quite a heavy band. Uh, well, yeah, some of it. But, you know, if you like sh- listen to Stray Heart and tunes like that, they're mm. really... Oh, I, I don't want to say they're an it sounds ridiculous saying they're an underrated band, a band that sold hundreds of millions of I think records. But, Not that underrated, um, yeah. <laughs> I love them. I love them. They're my go to. Okay. Um, I've probably got obvious ones, um, you know, all the ones, anyone that's listening, it's just the obvious like Paul Weller, The Who and all that. Yeah. But, um, two bands I really like, I, I love The Coral, and their their new album I think is fantastic. Yes. It's, it's, it's their Ogden's, it's, I think it's a great album. And also The Super Furry Animals. Oh, oh right, there we are. And they're very eclectic. Yeah. Yes, and he's got indeed. a new album out, he's, he's gone solo, Gruff, what's his, Gruff Reese? Yes, yeah. Um, how about you, Sam, in the background there with your squeaky oh, door? Oh, hang on. I'll, I'll, do you know what? I think I think she's on the other phone. Oh, don't worry then. Don't hang worry. On. He's, he's, he's uh, going to get her. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's on the phone, Cookie, isn't she? Uh, I was just saying, you're on the she's radio. On the, that's why you're uh, on the phone. Yeah, that's what would be Sam's go-to music? Um, ELO. She loves oh, a bit of ELO. Oh, hold on a minute. ELO. Oh. ELO is her go-to music. Do you know, I like ELO. Mr. Blue Sky yeah. is one of my favourites. In fact, yeah. her favourite ever song is Horace Wimp. Wow, there you are. The Diary of Horace Wimp. Yeah. Brilliant. Lovely. I do what I know I want to go and see is the Kinks, if they ever do reform. I think they are doing something in the background at the moment. I don't know for a fact. I keep hearing these little sneaky rumours and, you know, stuff like that. But uh, if they do get back together, I'll have to see them play live. Yeah. Never seen them play I, I live. See, I see Ray Davis do his, when he had his book out, he'd done a little solo thing and he, he was talking like Green Nets excerpts mm. from the book and... Um, playing acoustic songs in between that was well my wife actually shook him by the hand because uh, when she graduated as a mature student at london met in uh, london obviously um ray davis was also graduating as a doctor of letters no idea what that is and he was sitting there in the uh, sort of um you know on the stage area with all the other professors and stuff he done his uh he done his um what was it acceptance speech and he threw every single kinks uh, song title in he could it was brilliant absolutely <laughs> marvellous I'm sitting up with the gods you know trying to get my zoom lens in to try and get as much of a, a picture of him as possible and say oh was that close well I wasn't really that close <laughs> so my wife walks up gets her a scroll and she comes off the red carpet area and goes over and shakes him by the hand just so he, to annoy me um, which actually <laughs> it did annoy me and I've never forgiven her about it since but it's fantastic you know so yeah I'd love to see the Kings that's my would, go-to. would that be your go-to band in oh, yeah. the Kings that, it would be yeah definitely I've seen the Who many many times and uh, yeah. I'll, I'll see him again um, uh, yeah definitely the Kings um, just a little bit too young to enjoy the Kings before obviously you know the, you know before they sort of like 
hit the hit the road as such and uh, yeah, probably, yeah. probably hit each other as well <laughs> many times so. yes uh, yeah i mean brother rivalry and all of that you know, don't hear that often now do you <clears throat> uh, anyway no, no. yeah and uh, <laughs> just quickly then before we uh, wrap this interview up um is there anyone or anything we've missed out obviously go and buy the rise and fall now okay that's the first thing we've got to tell you tell you to do uh, how do we do that guys um, the best thing is probably to go on our page on Facebook. Yep. We we conveniently, our website has crashed just as we were releasing it. So the easiest thing is if you go on our Facebook page, yep. um, there's a PayPal link, and then just go into that. And people need to make sure they leave their address, and then we'll get one. Absolutely, out. yeah. That's uh, one of the first um, pages on there. So there's still a few CDs left and available to order for three pound fifty, including the P and P yep. and. Um, and if yep. they're interested in any of the um, back catalogue, the, 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 there's one or two three available albums, left yeah. still. Yeah, 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 we've got some of the free, some of the albums left. Yeah, brilliant, lovely, lovely, and of course, uh, you know, go and see you guys play live. That's where you are, I think, best at. You know, you you, yeah. you do a good show. Well, like I say, our next gig is 19th of August at the Whole Wide Arms in Guildford. Brilliant, and that is a gig for Tony Smith's Sound of the Suburbs record shop. Yep. Uh, the f- his fifth fifth birthday of the shop. So we are playing that gig along with uh, a band called Plague UK. Yes. And the members. And, and the members. Yeah. Now, are they the original lineup? I know one of them, unfortunately, is no, no longer with us. Um, but I've got, um, you know, I've got the members on uh, almost like a redial and uh, they sent me their new one over and everything. And uh, mm. it's really good. But uh, the members, yeah, I love the members, Sounds of the Suburbs, etc. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know if it's the original members or the members, but... I think you know, one or two of them is. the members of the members. I think I will ask the members about members. the members, yeah. I know one of them, unfortunately, <laughs> no longer with us, etc. But, yeah, based in Camberley, uh, originally. That's where I used to live until I moved into the uh, lofty, I don't know, lofty uh, Lincolnshire area now. Oh, you yeah, know. yeah, you're a Fenland boy now, aren't you? I am a Fenland boy. Well, I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> I've, still, I've still got the London accent there, and uh, there now I still get teased about that because they, they say path and bath. And I say it's a path, and I'm going to go and have a bath. You know what well, I mean? You're right, and they're wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, they I do... also say they give me six, don't they? Instead of give me five. <laughs> uh, 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 <clears throat> yes, we'll, we'll, we'll move still over that one. You're upsetting everyone tonight. He, he <laughs> does, does didn't he? Oh, so I've, 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 he like? I've upset the Fenland lot. Now, you have right? now. You really have. Yeah, look, 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 they've left now. Look, I can see all my numbers dropping down as we speak. All the lot from Spalding <laughs> are going, Dave. <laughs> We've just lost the Spalding fan club. That's it. Yeah, Spalding are now. Uh, they've put you. They've blocked you already my goodness me they're so quick <laughs> with their six finger anyway moving on <laughs> now obviously uh, i want you guys to take 30 seconds each and just to say hello to anyone you want and thank you to anyone you want or you know but you get 30 seconds each so you've got to be very very quick because i know obviously hello, the aim yeah. go on you go first Jay. there we go. go no go you go you go first i'll think about all it right, i'll go first all <laughs> right can i say hello to stevie b b b b b bartlett and his lovely mrs k Blonde there really suits her. Yes. Chrissy Glitter Avis, Sandro Bryan, Ian Tate, Ed and Tate, Julia Cast, Roy the Silver Sausage Duke, uh, the most gorgeous couple I've ever met, Dylan and Hannah Stevens. Um, oh gosh, Tony Smith from Sounds of the Summer. Pricey. Uh, Paul Price, who's at the gym pumping the iron. <sighs> oh, I don't know how many oh, you, you, you better not have forgot anyone. Uh, Jamie's mum. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, who else? Who else? Uh, Michael Garvey, uh, Michael Bunyan, uh, Tom Hilton from uh, 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 Tom Hilton's the other fan of John. AB like Be- Records. I feel like someone Ken Bruce's pop master, you know, when they say hello to him. Absolutely. AB Records. Can we have an autograph? You, you can. You don't want the <laughs> sign t-shirt. Photo. Yeah, you don't want the photo. And you don't want the t-shirt. They won't uh, fit you. Gary Crowley. Uh, <laughs> who else? Who else? Um, the rest of the band. Pete, Tom, Billy. Henry. You're trying to remember it's uh, a band now, aren't you? <laughs> Who else? And all the other Amy acts out there. Yeah, like, that's it. And like everyone else. And are. everyone else that knows you. <laughs> yeah. Well done. I think you had my 30 seconds as well there, didn't you? I think you had everyone's 30 seconds for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, when, when's the album due, guys? Good question. You know uh, you know, you're saying about Pete Sim, how busy he is and how talented he is? Yes. We need to tie him down because... I think our parts are almost done, but yeah. we need to tie him down. Absolutely. Well, uh, tie him down by his feet. Yeah. Yeah. Tie him down but by his feet because he needs his hands, it, obviously. 
Yeah, but it won't be like the last album. We won't lose it, and it'll it'll come out this year. Brilliant, lovely. Now, obviously, you guys are musicians, you're songwriters, uh, you're comedians, you're funny guys, you're serious guys, you know how to hold a party, but have, have you ever had a spot of DJing before? Have you ever done it before? Yes, I used to do a lot of DJing on the Northern Soul scene and the mod scene. Excellent, Years lovely. Ago, okay. Uh, well, between the pair of you, then, I would like you to announce... <clears throat> the rise and fall, the radio edit, please, live here on Target Radio. I'm going to play it for you right now. Here we go on uh, Target Radio. We have the n- new single from the AIM. We have the radio edit version. <laughs> Minus old potty mouth. <laughs> and it's called The Rise and Fall. And I think you deserve one of these. It's actually a nicey, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you've been wonderful this evening, guys. Okie dokie. I'd like to say thank you very much indeed to the AIM, uh, which was, oh, of course, uh, Jamie and uh, Grant. And, of course, a special appearance there Sorry, by can um, I say, Can Sam? I say hello to, to one very special person? Go on. He's my favourite northerner. Can I say hello to Andy Sherlock Holmes? Oh, I'll tell you because... what, you haven't done as well, Andy and Nicky. Oh, yeah, Andy oh. Walker, yeah, Nicky. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, forgot about them. You forgot uh, about uh, them? Uh, yeah, I know, I know. Oh, what are you like? So, like so I can't believe that. Under pressure that. with a 30 seconds. <laughs> um, but Andy Sherlock Holmes up there, up north, my favourite northerner. Uh, and uh, and Andy and Nicky Top Walker. Ah, there they are. Brilliant stuff. Guys, you've been wonderful this evening. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, I'll get this on uh, the Mixcloud by Friday this week and we'll turn this into a podcast as well. Two bites of the cherry. How's that oh, sound? Lovely. Oh, Brilliant okay. stuff. For now, though, I think they deserve one more of these. Why not indeed? There they are. Live audience. Looking forward to seeing you guys playing live again very, very soon. And uh, for now... Jamie, Grant, and of course the lovely Sam with the squeaky door. Uh, we'll see you all very, very soon. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> see you soon. Hey. Take care. Bye now. There they are. Brilliant stuff. Oh, wow, 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 wow. And let's have this clean version of the rise and fall. It's a very catchy tune. And not a sign of any potty mouth. They're still at it on the uh, Facebook Messenger right now. The AIM there, and thanks ever so much indeed to the AIM, Jamie and Grant, and of course, special appearance there by Sam uh, for jumping on this evening and entertaining us as a nation. Uh, We really do love the AIM. They are a fantastic group of girls and guys, and they really know how to entertain an audience out there when they play live, let alone their music. They just, they're all silly, but they are so, so good. Uh, we mentioned Carnaby Street. Well, actually, the boys mentioned Carnaby Street where they first met each other. And um, well, I thought we'd play this. It's not what it used to be, though. And I'd just like to say thank you very much indeed again to The Aim for jumping on this evening, entertaining us as a nation. I tell you what, I found out so much about them. They are such a good group of guys. Oh, cookie, cookie, cookie. Yes. I really love that cookie. Thank you. So after that one cookie, meet me next to that drink that full. Yes. Cookie, 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 me no longer just a rookie. Because what me ate one cookie. Goodbye, goodbye. Yes, it's time for me to say goodnight. So long, farewell. I'll be to saying goodnight. It's goodbye. It's goodbye from me. It's but don't forget, stay tuned here to Target Radio this evening. On After Me this evening, we've got American Pie with Trailer Man. And then I'm back at 10. When do I get my badge? Bang. Next week. It's the beat of the drum in the street. The nice time back. One more time, just like to say thank you very much indeed to The Aim. And I'm back next week from 7 o'clock. No special guests as of yet. But that could all change. (laughs) See you next week. Take care for now. (laughs) 
and we're back. Yes, and what did you think of that for an interview? Wasn't it great? We found out so much. Anyway, thank you very much indeed for joining us for the Target Radio podcast. I am your pod father. That is me, Cookie. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes if you can, please. If you think we deserve it, five stars, please. It does help with the future of Target Radio. Check out all of our great shows here on Target Radio. And as I say... Please, please, please support local artists and the unsigned band. Until next time, thank you very much indeed. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.